Wonderful job, fantastic job, Cheryl, today. Truly a blessing to us as we worship the Lord together. Folks, it is only by his grace, amen. amen. Everything we have is by the grace of God. He is so good. Take your Bibles one more time to Psalm chapter 18. I would also then have you turn to uh, Colossians chapter 1. Psalm chapter 18. And then we'll turn over here in just a minute to Colossians chapter 1 as well. Again, we're looking at our theme for the year. Uh, which is behind me on this wall, Psalm 18, verse 3. Say it with me. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. We've talked a lot about that these last three or four weeks, about how that God is worthy. One more time, look at this text, verse 1. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from my enemies. It's amazing this week again I was looking over this text and just doing another quick little word studies in my preparation again uh, for this week as well and uh, I looked at that word worthy again there because we're going to see it here in a different context in Colossians chapter 1 dealing with us needing to be worthy. Now our worthiness as we just even heard sung is solely by the grace of God. You and I are not worthy before a holy God because of anything we have done or any abilities that we have. When you see the word of God and we'll talk about this in a moment when you see the God the word of God mentioned how you and I should be worthy in certain areas of our life or before him it's only because of what Jesus Christ has done in us that we are able to go before a holy God and be counted worthy. Now, in Psalm 18, as I said just a minute ago, that word worthy there, again, we give you a definition, but I want to elaborate on this a little bit more today. It really gives a description of one who is of high degree. Isn't that a great explanation of our God? says, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy, one who is of high degree. It even can give a, a, a notation of a champion or one extent. Now, that, what that extent means is one that has existed. And what really that's saying is one that's always existed. Look at that, that verse right there. When we say, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy, he is of high degree, he is a champion, he is one that always exists. It even points to his eternality that he is God and always will be God. Therefore, he deserves our praise. Therefore, he deserves everything we can offer back to him. Now, I want us to consider this morning that, again, we are made worthy before a righteous God through what Christ has done for us. And that's the title of this message, Worthy in Christ. Worthy in Christ. Now, Colossians chapter 1 if you haven't turned there, I instruct you to do so. Colossians chapter 1. I'm going to read a few verses out of this text for our context this morning. Look at verse 1, if you will. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, and to me, Timotheus, our brother, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ, which are at Colossae, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which ye have to all the saints. For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof ye heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel, which is come unto you as it is come in all the world, and bringeth forth fruit as it doth also in you, since the day ye heard of it, and knew the grace of God in truth. Listen, folks, 
again, our salvation is by the grace of God. Period. Verse 18, as ye also learned of uh, Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is for you a faithful minister of Christ, who also declared unto us your love in the Spirit. Now look at verse 9 on through the end here, verse 14. Verse 9, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Now look at verse 10, That ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us unto the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Verse 10 again, that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. How do we do that? How do you and I as a child of God even begin to walk worthy before a holy God? How do you as a child of God even begin to think we can go before a righteous God and a perfect God? Well, again, it's not of us. It's because of what Jesus Christ has done. This word here, this word in Colossians, this word worthy in the scripture has a meaning of living, listen now, living appropriately after a goodly sort. So now put that in context this morning. If we are to walk worthy of these things we'll look at in scripture, if we're to walk worthy of our Lord, we are to walk appropriately or after a goodly sort. That's what this is talking about. Now, I don't have time this morning to go through with you other scriptures, but I do want to point some out. I'd encourage you to jot them down, read them throughout this week, where we even see in scripture other passages that speak to this. We see here where it says that ye might walk worthy of the Lord. You could turn or you could write this down and look later where we are commanded to be worthy of our calling in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 1. Same context. We are to walk appropriately. We are to walk after a goodly sort. We are to walk worthy of our calling in the Lord. Ephesians 4.1. We are to walk worthy of the gospel. Philippians 1.27. We are to walk worthy of God. 1 Thessalonians 2.12. And the other scripture says, we are then to walk worthy of the kingdom. 2 Thessalonians 1 verse 5. You see, this is throughout the New Testament over and over again as a child of God. We are commanded to walk worthy in these things. In our Christian life, we are to walk worthy before the Lord. We are to live a life that is acceptable to him. Folks, that's why it's so important that we do our very best to avoid sin. We, we, we had a great conversation in Sunday school today. Will you be tempted? Absolutely. Do you have to sin? No, you don't. We all choose to do that. We all choose to succumb to the flesh. We all desire, whether it be lust, whatever it is. And instead of turning to God first for strength, before you know it, we found ourselves in sin. That's not living worthy. 
That's not what God wants us to do. God wants us as a believer, God wants us as his child to live a life that's acceptable to him. Listen, you're saved if you're a child of God. Your eternity's settled. Your sin debt is settled. But you and I still need to do our best to walk acceptable before a holy, righteous God. Period. Other scriptures tell us to be holy. Be ye holy for I am holy. This isn't a foreign concept. I think we just throw our hands in the air and say, well, I can never really be holy. Or, you know, I, I, don't, I can never really be worthy. Listen, the word of God tells us to be. God doesn't tell us something and then just throws us out there in the street and say, now go live it. He tells us something. He commands us something. He instructs us in something. And then he equips us to do it. You as a child of God have the Holy Spirit in your life. You as a child of God have the scriptures in your lap. You have the tools to walk worthy before a holy God, just as I do. Are we doing that? Do we even desire to begin the process? Or are we so just wrapped up in our life and what we have to do and what my schedule says and where I must go that we give no thought of walking worthy before a holy God? We give no thought of doing our best to live holy, to live pure, to live clean, to live right for the one who shed his blood for us. You see, it should compel us. We're going to come around this table in a few minutes. We're going to remember what Christ did on Calvary for you and me. And when you think of his broken body, when you think of his beaten body, when you think of the blood that was shed for you, and for me, when you think of how he bore your sin and my sin and the weight of the sin upon his shoulders, he that knew no sin became sin for you and me. And listen to me, when you think of that as a child of God, that alone should compel you to desire to live holy and desire to walk worthy. See, there's no excuse. God says, you want an example? Look at my son. We ought to look at his son and say, God, I am so unworthy. But God, through Jesus Christ, you have made me worthy. You have made me a partaker of salvation. You have made me your child. Now, God, I want to do my best to walk a worthy life before you. Should be part of who we are, Christian. Should be part of our very fabric of the Christian life and how we live every day. We're not adding on living worthy or being holy to our schedule. We're trying to live worthy and live holy through our daily life. It's not something you just tack on to your list to do today. Well, I read my Bible. I ate my breakfast. I had my oatmeal. I did have oatmeal, by the way, which I never have. I got this to do this afternoon. We'll come back to church tonight. Oh, you know, and yeah, I should, I should try to walk worthy before the Lord. Folks, that's backwards. That's backwards thinking. We ought to get up every day as a child of God compelled to live and serve him. But often... The sad part is, we get up every day compelled to serve ourselves. Compelled to get the day done and work the Lord in. Compelled to fulfill the schedule and schedule God in it. Walk worthy 
before the Lord? Is your life acceptable to him? So I asked a question, and I'm going to answer it. The question is, how then do I walk worthy before God? What are some things that as a child of God I should be doing? What are some signs in me that I should have that show the Lord I am walking worthy before him? Look at verse 10 one more time. That ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. Now look, listen now. Being fruitful... In every good work, we ought to be fruitful. We ought to bear fruit. Take your Bibles to John, if you will. John chapter 15. Not very far back in your Bible. John chapter 15. I do have some scriptures that I want to read for you this morning. John chapter 15, uh, our, our, we're going to key on here in, in verse 15 down a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to read verses 1 through 14 just for sake of time today. But Jesus Christ in verse 1, uh, I'll, I'll give you this context. John 15 verse 1 says, I am the true vine and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit is taken away and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it might bring forth more fruit. Right? So he's laying this groundwork that you and I as a child of God, in our position in Jesus Christ, that listen, we are a branch on that tree. And your branch is either going to bear fruit or your branch isn't. Christ is saying he wants you as a child of God. God wants us as a child of God to bear fruit. Right? I told you this morning we're having our study in uh, Wednesday night. We're going to be going through the fruit of the Spirit and those aspects in our, in our Christian life. First and foremost, we see though Christ, or, or, or I would rather say uh, where we're at here in In Colossians, where Paul then teaches, when he tells us to walk worthy of the Lord, he then ties that into bearing fruit. Now jump over to verse 15. John 15, 15. Henceforth, I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made unknown unto you. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you, that ye should go and bring forth, say it with me, fruit. And that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of my Father in my name, he may give it. These things I command you, that ye love one another. Are you bearing fruit? You see, Wednesday night we're laying the groundwork. We haven't got into the fruit of the Spirit yet. Uh, we're, We're laying the groundwork, and that is to say, we are looking at preparing the soil first. Your life is the soil. Your soil needs to be prepared to grow, to produce, to bear fruit. This is why, and these aren't just things we teach our children. These aren't things that as adults we should dismiss. But this is why reading the scriptures, this is why prayer, this is why church attendance, this is why these things and these three things really in and of themselves are so important. What are we cultivating in our life? Are you preparing your soil, your life to bear fruit? What are we cultivating Are we fulfilling the flesh or walking in the spirit? And see, that's a question everyone in this room has to ask today. If I desire to walk worthy of God in my Christian life, in my bearing fruit, and if I'm not bearing fruit, it's because your soil's not prepared. There's something in your life that's hindering you. The Bible's pretty clear about what those things are. Is when we begin to fulfill the lusts of our flesh, you won't bear fruit. Your tree will become barren in a sense. Are you fulfilling the lust of the flesh? Or are you walking in the spirit? I I get this is a sobering thought. But man, shouldn't we want to walk in the spirit? Shouldn't we want to walk in the Spirit? Shouldn't we 
want to go before a holy God and do our best to walk worthy of him and to know that in my Christian life, I'm spending time. I prepared my soil. I prepared my heart. I'm in his word. I'm in his church. I spend time with him. And you know what? I'm growing in the Christian life. And God can see fruit produced in me. And then you know what happens? You know how great God is in your life when he sees fruit? You know what happens unless we fall into sin? What happens is when we start bearing fruit, we start doing the things we should, when we start walking in a holy life, when we start walking worthy of our God that saved us, get this, we bear more fruit. Isn't that amazing? It's not like, you know, a half of, uh, uh, you know, uh, I was going to say prune, but prunes don't go on trees. Uh, plums grow on trees just for you, uh, you know fruit tree scholars out there today. You know, it's not like you just stem a half a plum. Think about that. If you're bearing fruit in your life, the result of that fruit is because of your walk with him. It's because of what God is doing in your life. It's because you're spending time, you're investing time, you're, you're doing your best to model Jesus Christ in your life. You're growing spiritually, and then that little plum turns into a whole branch full. Can we sin? Absolutely. Do we? Absolutely. But we get forgiveness, we ask God, we go before him, we repent. And we continue to bear fruit. Sad part is, too often in Christianity, too often in independent fundamental Baptist churches, it's a lot of dead branches. We know we're saved. We know where we're going to spend eternity. But we don't invest a minute into preparing our soil. We don't invest a minute in watering our life with the word of God. Saturating it with the word of God. Sometimes we don't spend a minute with God's people in fellowship just to sit in this room that you're doing right now, you may not know this, but this is building your spirit. Yes, fellowship we had before church and fellowship we'll have after this service ends is wonderful. That builds your spirit as well. That's a vital part of your Christian life, but you are being fed right now just being together at Community Baptist Church. The Spirit of God is working in your heart, is building you if you'll let him. So are you bearing fruit? Am I bearing fruit? Philippians 1.1 1, 1 says, being filled with the fruits of righteousness. Look at that. Which are by Jesus Christ unto them that glory, or unto them the glory and praise of God. What's your life full of? Maybe you're struggling with this. Maybe there was a time in your life where you know what? You did. You had a whole great, vibrant plum tree. And now they're all dried up prunes. You know, there's good news in that, though. There was a time you were bearing fruit. And you can do it again. And I could do it again. But don't ever come to a place in your life that you're satisfied being dried up. That you're satisfied just attending. Be part of the Christian life. Walk worthy. Walk holy. Make your relationship with God mean something in your life. Listen, if you're here today, God is telling you something through his word right now. And I guarantee you, 
if you're listening, because he is convicting my heart as I prepare this message. He's convicting my heart as I preach this message. Listen, you and I could always bear more fruit. We're not perfect, but you should want to. You should say, God, what do I have to do? God, I want to get back to a place where I'm bearing fruit. It's not enough just to come and hear. It's not enough just to come and sit. It's not enough just to come and be encouraged by the fellowship or the word. You and I then have to put it into action in our life. We have to daily, daily commit, spend time in this book on our knees if you so can or in your favorite chair. I don't care where you pray, pray. And then, boy, when you know you're going to be fed in this place, you come and be fed so you can leave and bear fruit. It's a pretty simple model, isn't it? This isn't something that's a mystery to us. This isn't something that's like a surprise. God says, here's what you do. And then he says, I'll help you. He says, I'll give you the strength. I've given you the spirit. I've given you the tools. Those days you stumble, God says, seek me. I'll pick you up and dust you off and send you on your way to bear more fruit. God says, you know what? Those times in your life where maybe you just take your eyes off me for a moment and a couple of those fruits fall off. He says, you know what? Seek me, seek my face, and I will pick you up. I will dust you off, and I will send you on your way, and you go bear more fruit. He's with us every step of the way. You say, how do you know that? I just read it to you in those first couple of verses of John 15. God is the husbandman. Doesn't just plant the bush, plant the tree, and turn around and say, well, I hope the weather works this month. Well, I hope that, you know, a Jeff Doro tree sure grows. I just flicked him in the ground. No, you know what God does? God would open up Jeff Doro's heart to the knowledge of his word, to a relationship in prayer, to fellowship with his people, so Jeff Doro could grow. I'm just picking on you, brother. He doesn't just leave us. Even goes on to say, you know, there are times he prunes us. And those prunings hurt, don't they? But it's because he loves us and he wants us to bear more fruit. What a great God we serve. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. We see in scripture over and over again, walk worthy of your calling. Walk worthy of the gospel. Walk worthy of the kingdom. Walk worthy of God. Walk worthy of the Lord. That's what you and I need to be doing. We need to be living a life that is acceptable to him, that is well-pleasing to him, that is of a goodly sort. Determined to bear fruit. But don't miss what I spoke a minute ago. Your ground, if you will, your soil, if you will, needs to be prepared. And we don't do that just once. I can't go to the Lord today and say, God, I want to prepare my soil. I read my word, I read your word, I spent time with you, I'm feeling good. Went to church. Man, that preacher is fan honesty. <laughs> but God, I'm growing. I just today was a great day. God, I have fellowship with you. God, help me to bear fruit. You know what? God is pleased with you. But you can't tomorrow just stop doing those things. Tomorrow you got to do it all over again. You got to water yourself. The seeds planted, you're starting to grow, but now you got to keep the growing process going. You got to be in the Word. You got to get some sunlight. You got to get out. You got to be with God's people. 
and you grow a little bit more, and the next day you do it again, and the next day you do it again. And we're not doing it for our own sake. We're doing it to be like our Savior, Jesus Christ. And then what happens is, oh boy, one day you go to the tree, and before a holy God, before, listen now, a worthy God, you have some fruit to offer. Man. Hit that some? I don't want I don't know about you. I want my tree to be full of fruit. Not so you can say, oh, look at Pastor Fisher, how productive his spiritual, I don't care. Sorry. I want God to look at me. I want to offer him back what he's due because of what he's done for me. And then I pray that as I bear fruit, not only is it pleasing to him, but then, man, my life is a vessel. My life is something that can be used so that others will see him and me. Man, I didn't get very far in this message today. I don't even think we're halfway done. But I'm going to challenge you this morning. We'll finish this next week. The first aspect, the first area that you need to look at in your life to walk worthy before a holy God is as we see here in Colossians are we bearing fruit are we a branch in this tree if you will of God's family that is being productive because if you're not he will prune you You'll be part of his family. But what's going to happen is with that, there may be some hardships because he loves you and he wants us to bear fruit. He wants us to get back to him. Now imagine just for a minute, those of us here that are members of Community Baptist Church, not to leave you out if you're not, but just for a moment, those of you that are. Listen, we're, we're part of this tree. We're all on the same root system, whether you like it or not, right? Whether you like who your ancestors are, we're all in the tree. I don't care if you don't like Aunt Millie, you're in the tree with Aunt Millie, right? Just the way it is. Now imagine for a minute though, is as this tree, every one of us, every one of us was bearing the fruit that God so desired. Think of what we could do as Community Baptist Church. You see, so don't just leave here thinking that your branch only affects your life. It does. And God's going to work in your life. He's going to convict you. He, he may bring things in your life to draw, him, to draw you back to him. Whatever it may be, he may encourage you if you're bearing fruit to bear more fruit. However, you're not just a branch all by yourself. You're a branch in a whole other bigger tree than you. My desire is for all of us to bear fruit. Now, does that mean your branch is going to be full and my branch is going to be full? Probably not. But let's be bearing fruit on our own different, uh, we'll say, spiritual growth levels or spiritual maturity levels. But let every one of us determine to have some fruit on our branches. Right now, if you got one, you got one old plum, that's great. That's fantastic. You're doing what God wants you to do. Keep doing it. And before long, you'll bear more fruit. 
You know right now you're solid in your faith. You're solid in your walk. You say, Pastor Fisher, I know I'm bearing fruit. You keep doing that too. And God will bear more fruit in you. But let us, let us though never get complacent than to look at that branch and to say, hey, I think I'm doing pretty good today. Because the minute you and I have that thought, boy, I'm going to tell you right now, it doesn't take very long for a branch to die and fall off or be pruned. Guard your heart. Desire to be holy. Desire to be pure. You are tempted with sin. Abstain. The devil tempts you. You're tempted with evil. You're tempted with desire, lust, whatever it may be. Guard your heart because you want to bear fruit. Folks, let's go before a holy God, a worthy God, and offer him the fruit that we should be bearing. Next week we'll finish this message we'll look at some other aspects how we also can walk worthy before a holy God I'll close with this thought we are going to have our communion service here in just a minute I'd encourage you even through this time we're going to have an invitation as well But even as we take communion today and we truly remember what Christ did for us, what that means to us and for us today, what that entails for our eternity, think about this challenge today. Think about this message As you consider that body of Christ, as you consider that precious shed blood of Christ and how precious that should mean to you as a child of God, I think we'd be amiss if we didn't at least contemplate what kind of fruit we're growing because it's it's about him. It's about what he has done. And what's neat It doesn't just stop there. It's about what he will continue to do and then what he is going to do. And listen, my friend, he is coming back. And when he does, I want my branch to be full. I pray you do as well. Lord, we love you so much today. God, in the time you've given us, Lord, not looking at a lot of scripture, but God, truly being challenged by your word this morning. Lord, I pray that as we have really examined your holiness these last few weeks, God, and then today and next week, Lord willing, we will continue to look at scriptures that point how we ought to be holy for you before you not of us but because of Christ and his sacrifice God as we desire to be holy we look this morning how we should desire to bear fruit and God desire just isn't enough God we ought to put some things in practice in place in our life We know what they are. They're simple things. We just have to be faithful and dedicated to do them. God, you've given us your spirit. You've given us your word. We can have fellowship with you any moment of the day. And then, God, we can come here and be fed from the word of God. We're blessed to have a church like this. We're blessed to know that what's going to be preached from this pulpit is going to be true. It will feed us. God, help these that are here today, myself included, to want to bear fruit. Not for the applause of men, not for pride's sake, but God, because you are holy and you are worthy. And God, we want to offer you back a part of us that you've made available for us to offer. 
God, help us to bear fruit. Help us as we look next week at even some more tools, how we can walk worthy before you, that those as well will can tell us and, and encourage us and challenge us in our Christian life to come before you and walk worthy. Bless our invitation, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. With head bowed and eyes closed this morning, no one looking around for just a minute. As the piano begins to softly play, listen, I want to stay just a moment here today. You can only be worthy because of Christ. As I said, it's not of what I've done. It's not of what you've done. It's through him. And you must be a child of God to be worthy before a holy God. We didn't spend a lot of time this morning, but I do want to give you an opportunity. If you never received Christ as your Savior, if maybe today you're, you, you know you're not a child of God, there's never been a time where you, in essence, went before the Lord and repented of your sins or believed the gospel of Christ and asked Christ to be the Savior of your life. You say, I know I've never done that. Listen, we want you to settle that today. In a minute, we're going to have you come, if you're able, if you would so desire, to this altar. We'll pray with you. We'll take the word of God and show you how you can be saved and settle that today. And then, here, listen to this, and then you can walk worthy before a holy God because you become his child. We'll give you that opportunity in just a moment. Child of God, Christian. This message was for us. I pray the Spirit has worked in your heart today, in your life today, through his word. Maybe there's some here that say, Pastor Fisher, I desire to bear fruit. Maybe there's an area in your life that you just need to sure up. Maybe there's some more time you need to invest with God in your relationship. Anybody here that would say, just pray for me? Because I do want to bear fruit. I do want to, I see your hands, yes. I do want, I see your hands. I do want to commit, absolutely, I see hands all over. I want to commit. Maybe I'm not in the word like I should. Maybe I'm not in prayer like I should. Maybe I'm not with God's people and, and around the preaching of God's word like I should. But I want to commit to be there more. Yes, I see your hand. Anyone else that just say, pray for me. I want to have something to offer God with my fruit. Yes, I see your hand. Yes, I see your hand. Folks, God's working. Let him work in your life too. Make a decision. You may not have raised your hand this morning. Listen, I understand. You can still make a decision in your seat today to bear more fruit. I would, however, give you an opportunity. As we said a moment ago, we're going to sing a verse invitation and we're going to give you an opportunity to come here to this altar. Just spend time with the Lord. Spend some time, commit those things you've already spoken to him about, but come and spend some time with him and say, Lord, I do want to bear fruit. And then ask him for help. Ask him for direction. Ask him for strength. Ask him to help you commit. Ask him to help you be faithful. Give it to the Lord. It's of him. It's not of you. I know we're set for communion, but you can come and kneel at these chairs or sit at wherever you'd like. Just spend some time with the Lord today if God has spoken to your heart. Father, you're so good. Be with these that raise their hand. Lord, they desire to grow. They desire to walk in you. They desire to bear fruit. I pray that you would help them, Lord whether it's in areas in their life that they need to sure up for you spiritually, whether they just desire to grow more fruit than they did yesterday, give them the strength to do that. Lord, I thank you for the spirit in this place. Lord, it's of you that hearts are convicted. It's of you that we're challenged. It's of you that we're encouraged. God, we want to keep it that way. God, protect us and then help us 
as believers, as brothers and sisters in Christ, to be fruit bearers together. And then, oh God, let us accomplish great things for you as we work together. Bless now this invitation, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, if God has spoken to your heart, you come this morning.